view, especially on the Zambian landscape, observed significant yield gaps with rain-fed agriculture that has been triggered by reduced rainfall as well as heightened temperatures. Through the 19 years that I've spent in the conservation sector, I have had the privilege to actually observe a critical transformation of a special vegetation type. Colophospermum mopani, otherwise in our local communities referred to as mopani, is that one tree that occurs in eastern Zambia, in the Luango Valley. It initially was, is, is naturally a big tree with a beautiful crown and grows to a height of about 30 meters. Over time, this life form has transformed into a stunted shrub tree. This transformation has also been observed in other parts of, of the southern region, in the Limpopo of northern South Africa, as well as in the northeast of Namibia in places like Itosha National Park. It is important to observe that the transformation has been catalyzed by a compound of environmental parameters. Some of these environmental parameters have been because of human activities in the area, the cutting down of trees for firewood as well as for charcoal production. It has also been changing its form because of foraging. Elephants prefer this particular species and when they forage on it, they sometimes literally uproot a whole tree. But more interesting is that with the changes in the climate, this tree has actually stayed stunted, as I said, um, in the other areas, including Zambia. Clearly, climate change is impacting on our biodiversity. Some of you might be wondering, what is biodiversity? DeLong, in 1996, coined biodiversity as the variety of living organisms. And these living organisms occur as plant forms, as is the case of trees, grasses, as animal life, wildlife and livestock included, as macro-organisms, as is the case of mushroom. But more importantly, especially for farmers who I saw lift their hands, micro-organisms, as is the case of bacteria in the soil. The combination of, these biodivers of this biodiversity, the living organisms, and our activities as human beings, socially and economically, is supposed to be a balance that has been referred to as landscape approaches. You may sit back and think, what is it that is impacting? What, what are the signs, really, that climate change is happening to our biodiversity? The land use types have really changed. What used to be protected, nice, thick forests has been converted into human settlements. More importantly, especially with the scientists, is the clear indication of deforestation and desertification, where complete forests have had their forest cover cleared to an extent that these areas that were previously covered by forests now become deserts. Coupled with that has been the heightening of temperatures and the ultimate depletion of the ozone layer, which otherwise holds back on the high temperatures. The life forms that I talked about, the biodiversity, and their patterns, their habituations, have really been modified by the presence of higher temperatures and obviously with lower rainfall patterns or more rainfall. 
what is it that you and I can do in our individual capacity or even at small scale level to be able to mitigate these impacts of climate change in our lives? I want to introduce to you a concept of restoration. Restoration is basically giving back life to something that was dead. In this case, giving back life to our biodiversity. I have been privileged to be with a project that is fostering reforestation, which is called Eden Reforestation Projects. It is fostering reforestation through working with local communities with a vision of healthy communities with a healthy environment. In being able to restore our environments, our biodiversity at small scale, we could, for instance, consider replanting the depleted forests. Replanting, re restoring the depleted forests can take the form of us establishing nurseries. We could promote our indigenous species. Gubosha coleospermum, the famous ro rosewood that is used for timber, is that one that can be vegetatively propagated in those little nurseries and will not only be replenishing our forests, but also will be giving back to the community in terms of their finances. But as communities, initiatives could be put up to ensure that we look into giving back life to forests that have otherwise been cut off and are all shooting at the same time. That way, every of the shoots are competing for resources in terms of light, in terms of nutrients, and in terms of water. The community can step up and thin those areas and be able to assist the revegetation of those areas so that if you have individual thinned out trees, properly spaced, the competition for resources is teased out. Our natural phenomena of exposing fires to our areas leaves much to be desired. We have, over time, developed, not just in Zambia, but even regionally in Africa, developed the concept of slash and burn to be able to facilitate a good agricultural produce. We can revisit that. Firstly, if we have to expose our areas to fire, why not early burn? That way, the, the intensity of fire and even the litter that is around is not very dry to scorch every form of organism that is in the soil. And even the other biodiversity, it could be ants. In terms of agriculture, instead of slash and burn, we can revisit our methods of agriculture. Smart agriculture interventions, that will speak to us being responsible about what we're putting into the earth and thereby being able to mitigate the impacts of climate change. As governments, they cannot sit back. At policy level, it is important that governments designate areas as protected areas. This is something that a lot of countries are doing. Good thing in Zambia, more than 33% of our land cover is covered by protected area, which is a big up. But again, we need to sit back, think through the areas that have been designated protected areas. How much resource are we putting into protecting them or keeping them that way? So as governments, we need to up our game in terms of resource allocation to keeping the integrity of protected areas for the sake of protecting and conserving biodiversity. Another effort that could be put in place is a concerted effort. Governments or communities regionally that decide they are sitting with a resource that is important could get together and conserve areas jointly. That way, promote aspects of connectivity 
and ensure that the landscape is protected. A good initiative like that one is the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area. A big up to Zambia, because not just to Zambia, but to the, to the other four countries, because the rationale for setting up this Transfrontier Conservation Area was initially to protect wildlife. Over time, the focus has also moved to be able to protect plant life, to be able to protect fishery resources, but more importantly, protecting and conserving the resources for the sake of the communities that are actually utilizing them. And that way, gaining a win. As concerted efforts are put in place, an important thing that governments or policy level um, interventions need to consider is the fact that planning needs to be upheld. Are we able to assess, to take an inventory of what resources we have, especially the ones that need protection, especially the ones that are threatened? Are we able to put funds to the conservation of these resources and individuals or institutions indeed that will take care of these resources? With what time frames? But more importantly, what is our ultimate goal? And only then can we actually monitor our performance as regards conservation if we have clearly set out key performance areas. The balance of the economics, the social, and the environment need to be kept. If you and I sit back Business as usual, yes, we have a resource there. It's never getting depleted. We, will get, we run into a situation like the, the bottom graph where we get to deplete our resources. And children and our grandchildren after us don't get to enjoy these resources. So I want to call upon each one of you to think responsibly, to consume sustainably, to produce sustainably. And only then would we be able to strike that balance. More importantly, all of you, you and I, need to appreciate that biodiversity is actually our life insurance policy. If we sit back, we lose it. And so let's work together to conserve it. Thank you.